I'm waiting for it to tell me that I'm live. Okay, I'm live. Hey everybody. So I just had a disastrous uh, attempt at trying to go live from my grief coach Karen page and share it into here and I'm not sure that anybody saw it so I'm going to go ahead and delete that one but I wanted to um, to come back and do the right live with your Q&A with your questions that you asked on your post yesterday and I also couldn't see any comments while I was uh, on that other page so if you have new questions or feedback on any of these things that I'm talking about, please, 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 uh, you know, put a comment here so I can try to um, try to answer. And if you're here and you're watching, let me know you're here. Say hi. Uh, give me a heart or a thumbs up or something so I know. Um, we had some really awesome questions yesterday. And so I really thought, wow, this is just a great opportunity. And let's hope that I can <sighs> thoughtfully and eloquently answer. Oh, yeah. And the other funny thing from the um, live that I just did was my closet door. This is my daughter's room. My old my, my daughter's moved away, but this is her room. And I had the closet door wide open and there was crap hanging out all over the place. It's stuffed full of stuff. So you guys get the version of the video with the closet door closed. So aren't you so lucky? Um, okay, so let me get into the questions. And uh, let's see, the first one was, does PTSD and anxiety ever go away? And it's an awesome question. And I'm going to break it into two parts because I feel like PTSD and anxiety are two different things. Um, so many moms that I talk to have been diagnosed with PTSD. And even if they haven't, I really feel fairly sure that they suffer from trauma. I mean, they've lived through something that no mom should ever have to live through. So PTSD for a mom that has lost a child is so normal. But what many people don't know about PTSD is that it is not a lifelong disease that you get. It's not a disorder that stays with you for life unless you don't work through it, but that there's many things that you can do to work through it. And I mean, it does many times take medication and working with a therapist to get through it. But my big message on PTSD is that you can get through it and that there is a side effect of PTSD that is scientifically proven. And I talk about this all the time, can't shut up about it. So if you've already heard me say it, you know that it's called PTG. It's post-traumatic growth. And it's growth that can come through, come from living through a horrifying trauma. So if you haven't heard me talk about it and you're interested, this book right here, Post-Traumatic Growth Workbook by Richard Tedeschi and Brett Moore. Uh, it's awesome, very good book. And it introduces the different ways that have been proven to grow through grief or through trauma. Um, personal strength, improved relationships, appreciation of life, new life paths and possibilities, spiritual change, and a new understanding of life's meaning and purpose. So if you're struggling with PTSD or just struggling with the trauma of a lot of memories and, and flashbacks, um, check that book out. It's amazing. Um, and then the second part of the question was anxiety. And, you know, anxiety is a um, something that can happen to everyone at, at some time in their life. I mean, many, many people suffer from anxiety for a lot of different reasons. When it comes to the loss of a child and anxiety, you really need to identify the source of what is it that's causing you the anxiety. Are you just generally anxious all day? As soon as you wake up to go to bed, you just feel anxious all the time? Or is it certain things that trigger you to feel this the anxiousness? Um, you know, it could be uh, seeing a video, a picture, walking by their bedroom, um, you know, looking at their clothes. There's so many. Seeing a friend in the store that uh, reminds you of your child. I mean, there's so many things that can bring on anxiety. And so 
I think the most important thing when it comes to anxiety is to identify what is the source of that anxiety. And is there something that you can do to handle those situations in a different way? Um, and of course, if when you try these things and they don't work, then you know you do need to get professional help because being in an anxious state all the time is not normal. Now, with grief, I guess nothing is normal, but if you're going on with prolonged bouts of anxiety, you know, you need to work on that. You need to get help with that. But going back to the example of um, walking by your child's bedroom, let's just say, and, you know, every time you walk by, you just get anxious, your heart starts to flutter and you get teary eyed and you are drawn to the room and you just look and stand there. And so I just asked, like, is there something that you can do to reframe that feeling? Is there something that you can do to make the presence of that bedroom something that can comfort you, something that can make you feel good, something that can be full of happier memories? And by the same token, just know that, you know, it's okay for yourself to be sad, that um, we, we all need to take time out of our lives to do this grief. You don't lose a child and just expect that you're going to be happy 24 seven, which leads me to the next question, which was, when should you worry that grieving has turned into depression? They mirror each other so much. And it's super true. Um, both symptoms include the intense sadness, the poor appetite, the weight loss. Um, but the difference is that after the first few weeks of, or not even weeks, I guess I don't really want to put a time frame on it, but after the after a shorter period of time, um, the grief that you, the depression that you feel from your grief will decrease over time and won't be there 24 seven, but will come more in waves and with specific triggers that, um, that happen. With depression, depression never really goes away. You may get momentary um, breaks from it, but you know, depression is a serious situation. It's life-threatening. It's more persistent. It's pervasive. It takes over your whole life. And so, you know, in many ways it does mirror grief, but just know that if you are in a situation where you are debilitated, you cannot get up out of bed, you cannot make a move, you cannot lift your head off the pillow or off the couch, then it's time to go and see if you can get some help for that. Um, and a lot of times talking about it can help. And if you talk through it, then you can find out if it's the def if it's the difference between the grief part of your depression or a clinical depression that needs treatment, that needs medical treatment. Um, but one thing I would just really want you to remember is that sadness is normal. Um, feeling sad when it comes to losing a child is obviously normal, but even in life, even in just general life, do we expect that we're going to be happy to 100% of the time? No, we're not, we're not built to be happy 100% of the time. Life brings with it a balance of happy and sad. And sometimes the happiness that follows the sadness feels so much happier because you've gotten through the sadness. So whenever you're feeling sad, don't start to feel like something's really gone wrong or that you're grieving the wrong way. You know, sadness comes with this territory and you need to be, you need to just, you know, understand and learn ways to deal with the emotion of sadness so that you can get through it. It's, um, it's an important part of life, whether you're grieving or you're not, you still need to learn to deal with the emotions that come along with life, which include sadness. Um, so, um, next question was, how do you get up and get going every morning? And it's a good question. Um, it, it is very hard 
initially to get up and get going. And then even as you start to be able to do some of those things, some days you just want to make that decision to just not get up and going. Grief really just takes the energy right out of you. So what I found in my little trick for getting up and getting going has been to number one, have a plan, have a plan for what you're going to be doing, what you want to get done. Um, what's important to you, not necessarily what you should do or what everybody else thinks you should do, but what you want to do, what you want to get done. And you're frustrated with yourself sometimes if you don't get it done, have a plan, make a plan and then act with conviction in memory of your child. So I, this is a trick that I do whenever I have something that I don't really want to do. And it's kind of, for me, changed a little bit because it's not so much that I, I can't do it because I'm grieving because I'm not actively grieving in the depths like you, some of you maybe, but it's just a trick for me when I have something that I want to do that means a lot to me, but that I just don't feel like doing or don't have the energy to do. And I just tell myself to do it for Nick. And so for you, just do it for your child. And, um, you know, it can be anything simple. It can be, I really need to take a shower today. I really need to get up and make my kids some dinner. Um, you know, the things that are important to you that you want to do, just say, I'm going to do it for him or I'm going to do it for her. And another good trick is just to, when you make a plan, to promise yourself just a little bit of a, um, uh, sorry, my, a reward. Just promise yourself a little reward for um, doing what, what you really want to get done. And it doesn't have to be any grand thing, but just something that makes you feel good and gives you a little break from your grief. Um, next question, how, if you've lost a baby, how do you know if you're ready to have another? Um, and it's a good question, but it doesn't necessarily need to be tied to the loss of a child. Um, I think, how do you ever really know when you're ready to have a baby? It's something that you and maybe your partner and your family decide together based on your current circumstances. And you know, you and I both know that there's never the perfect time to have a baby. So um, I think it's just really something where you kind of have to follow your intuition. You need to have really good communication with the people around you and you need to just let yourself be guided by what you feel is, you know, you're ready for and your is your truth. And I'm just going to say on that point that um, when I lost Nick, my now ex-husband very early on said that he wanted to have another baby. And at the time, it was way too soon for me to think about that. And I just was very resistant to it, you know, just thinking like, no, no one can ever take Nick's place. But after a short time, I agreed I mean, I kind of felt like it was the right time in my life. I was, you know, getting older. And if I wanted to, it wasn't something we had ever planned. But if I wanted to, um, that it was a good time to do it. And I will say that it was the biggest blessing that ever came to me after the loss of Nick, um, the birth of my son, Colin. Uh, he brought me and the rest of my family a whole lot of joy. And, you know, it was the best decision that we ever made. So that's just my personal story there. Um, do the what if questions ever stop? Um, I think that they do. I think that they can. But I think that it's another thing that you have to work at. And, um Again, when those what ifs come to you, you need to really get with them, process them, feel those feelings and ask yourself why you're asking that question. And what other question can you ask instead that will serve you better? So um, 
you know, if the what if is, what if I hadn't have gone to work that day? What if I hadn't have gone to work to, that day? Wonder if my child would still be here. And, you know, that turns into guilt for the mom who says I shouldn't have gone to work. Uh, you know, everything would be fine. And, and there's a couple of ways that you can deal with that. And one is to ask yourself, is that really true? Is it definitely true that if you hadn't have gone to work that day, the circumstances would be different? And I mean, 99% of the time, the answer is going to be no. There's no guarantees. Uh, we're not guaranteed anything, really. And then the second thing is to reframe it and to say, this happened while I was at work. That's true. But I was out there earning a living for my family and doing the very best that I knew how to do, which is what we all do. I mean, we all just want to do the best that we can do. And every moment of every day, we're constantly making decisions about what's the best thing for everyone. And so when you start to go there and to ask yourself, well, what if this and what if that, just like really take a look at it and realize that that is just an opening for you to start beating yourself up. And that can't you replace that what if question with another question like, well, what if I hadn't gone to work? What if all those years I didn't go to work and we didn't have a place to live or we didn't have the nicer things that we had or I wasn't able to take my children on the vacations that now mean so, you know, so many give me so many precious memories. So it's a reframe on the what if. Um, and I will just say, too, that over time. Yes, those what ifs don't slap you in the face like they do early on. So um, just give yourself grace, give yourself time and try to really look at reframing those what ifs. OK, and then I think I just want to make sure the last question that I have was um, from somebody who said, the crash site. Should I go or shouldn't I? I'm still struggling with this and the negative thoughts that I still get sometimes. And this is one that many, many people deal with in some way. Like, for example, you know, if it's not going to the crash site, it might be going to the cemetery, going to the place they died, going to the last place that you visited together, going on a vacation to a place where, um, you have happy memories or going in their bedroom or going somewhere where you had a fight. There's, there's so many different scenarios of, you know, visiting a place that is going to trigger you. It's going to bring up memories. And so just remember that there are no rules to any of this. And certainly there's no rules that say, Oh, well, yes, if your child died at a certain location, you should go there. No, there's no rule. If you in your heart feel like that is not going to be the right place, that's not going to make you feel better, that's not going to give you comfort, don't go there. Go there when you're ready. And it may be that today it feels so wrong and you don't want to go and you resist it. And tomorrow you'll wake up and say, today's the day I'm ready to go. I'm ready to be at the place where he last was. But just remember that there's no rules to grief. And if you do decide to um, go and visit, um, make a plan, you know, just make a plan. Be prepared that you're going to have emotions. Be prepared for that. Bring somebody with you who can support you. Make it an event if you want to. Bring everyone or just bring yourself but make a plan and be prepared for what the consequences of that may be. Um, and then just know too that, um, you know, that place isn't going anywhere and there's no deadline to the day when you can go and visit. So, um, and that's the case for most. I mean, I know there's probably some others where you kind of have to make a decision, but in this situation, that place is always going to be there. And if it doesn't feel right right now, just put it on hold. And then someday it may feel right. Okay, well, um, that was all the questions. Thank you for those that watched. I could tell that there were some, but I couldn't tell who they were. 
didn't get any questions or comments here, so I don't know if that means it's not working or what, but um, I really thank you guys so much. And I have a feeling that possibly um, Facebook didn't work and we didn't, I should have seen some comments, but let me see, let me check, let me see if I can check on my phone and see something different. I just don't want to leave if there's other questions or comments. Nope. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you know how much I love you. Let me check. Let me see if I can check. And um, with a lot of these things that I talked about, if you need some help processing, figuring out, um, what it is that's actually causing you the anxiety or the depression or, you know, working through some of these questions that you have. Um, I would love to do that with you. That is what I do every day. And I'm, you know, I'd be glad to be the person uh, who could hold space for you while you make those decisions and try to help you with some of those reframes or establish some little baby steps that you can take to try and uh, take a step forward. Okay. So happy Friday. Take care. Bye.